Hello, I'm Marek Gulias. Welcome on board of my sea wind canoe. This is my heavy duty expedition canoe, which I'm going to take this year into Missouri River 340 race. Unless I will get crazy and jump back on stand up paddle board. If you are not familiar with the race, it is long distance endurance paddling race, 340 miles from Kansas City on Missouri River, obviously, to St. Charles. This is difficult race, challenging. It may be the most serious outdoor challenge for you in your life. But I would like to share some tips and secrets which make, which may make this challenge a little easier or lighter at least. First one, it's not really 340 miles. It's only something like 339. I measured this race course several times with my GPS and I've never reached 340. Bad news is that those last miles are very, very long. Much longer than uh, your miles just below Kansas City. Next question, do you really need to paddle that distance to finish the race? No, not really. The river will help you. There is a strong current. Let's assume only two miles per hour. If you are sitting in your boat in the middle of the river, hopefully in the middle of deep channel, in 80 hours doing nothing, you will cover 160 miles. So what's left? 180. 180 sounds much better than 340. Of course, if you are uh, ambitious and try to finish the race, let's say, in 50 hours, the good river will have much less time to help you. But anyway, the point is you should stay on water as long, as much as possible. Of course, you need to stop, rest, sleep, but use your stopping length time wisely and efficiently. Well, I have more good news for you. As much as this race is difficult and challenging, and obviously you need to be well prepared, it is, the, it is not the most difficult paddling race in the world. It's a river race. You cannot really get lost. Just follow the river. Or rather follow paddlers in front of you. It's not like in Texas water safari uh, where deprived in sleep and tired you can start paddling upstream. The Missouri River will not let you make such a stupid mistake. Next, there are no portages, no log jumps, no rapids, no paddling upstream, no uh, bridges with low clearance, just stay on the water and follow the river. There is also no really nasty or annoying wildlife, like in other races, as long as you are staying on water. No mosquitoes, no mayflies filling your boat, no nasty snakes, spiders, fire ants like in Texas, no gators. It's not likely that you will run into sleeping manatee as it may happen in Florida in water tribe events. Yes, uh, big fish can jump and splash you and give you heart attack, but usually it's a pretty nice, friendly water environment. And you are not alone in this race. You will be surrounded by hundreds of other paddlers, safety boats, 
crowd of people at every boat ramp and access point. It's good to draft behind other boats, to paddle in group with boats with similar speed, talk, share stories. Early years were more difficult in this matter. I remember in 2006, the very first race, I paddled mostly alone the entire time, except a few hours below Kansas City and the last 20 miles of crazy uh, sprint to the finish with Mr. Brian Hopkins. <laughs> Good memories. So the problem is rather that it may be difficult to find some privacy on the river and on the land too. In early years I used to sleep in at Dalton Bottoms, alone. In my last race, 2018, it was difficult to land on that crowded boat ramp, difficult to find a spot on the ground to lay down, and then it was pretty loud snoring. What else? You will have, or you may have, land crew, which is really how they will cheer you up, give you food, cold drinks, make a comfortable place to sleep. You know, in extreme cases, you can go to the hotel to sleep of, to make this luxury cruise. Of course, you will be slow. I had such a one slow race, self-supported, but I was basically paddling from barbecue to barbecue at stopping at every checkpoint. But if you want to go a little faster, don't stop that often. It's a river race. It's not open water. Practically, you can stop almost everywhere. In emergency, if weather gets crazy or if you feel tired or sick, you can stop almost everywhere. Just approach a shore with caution, select the shore with slow current, small rocks preferably, not big rocks. I mean rocks you don't like to sink in, in the mud. So you can stop, rest, recover, wait for better conditions. Of course, there are some river demons fighting against you. Headwind, storms, fog. But mostly you will be fighting against yourself, against your own weakness. So it's pretty personal. Anyway, if you like to hear more stories like this, please subscribe to my channel and, you know, like it. Give me some moral support to continue with that channel. And see you next time. Thank you.